Good morning, everybody. Today, I'm going to show you how a three diagram is used to analyze a sentence that experiences transformation. And you know, this transformation is governed by the rule and the rule is called transformational rule or in a plural form, we say transformational rules. Um, analyzing transformational rules actually is the hardest or the most difficult analysis of a sentence. Okay, first of all, we have to define what transformational rules are. Okay, as you can see here, the question is what is transformation? As you see, that transformation is derived from uh, the term form, okay, is derived from the root form. And you can also find that the word transformation contains morphine trans. Trans means changes. So what we are talking in transformation is changes. In the context of a sentence, okay, the transformation here involves changes in sentence structure, okay, or changes in the constituents that constitute a sentence. Well, now let's see the nature of transformation. Actually, transformation is the process of changing the structure from the deep structure into the surface structure, from the underlying structure into the surface structure, okay? The deep structure is the mental structure, the structure which is in our mind, that is the underlying structure. And the surface structure, is the structure which is written out or which is spoken. That is what we call as a surface structure. Sometimes the surface structure follows the deep structure, but sometimes the surface structure is different from the deep structure. And what makes the difference between the deep structure and surface structure is transformation. And you know, there must be a rule that governs that transformation. Otherwise, anybody will be free to use a kind of transformation as they want. Okay, so there must be a rule and this is what we call as transformational rule or transformational rules in a full form. Okay, now, there are several kinds of transformation in English. At least I'm going to introduce to you six kinds of transformation in English. The first one is particle transformation or TPRT, okay, particle transformation. And the second one is adverbial phrases transformational rules. In this part, okay, you are going to see how adverbial phrases are changed into different structure. The next one is adjective clause or relative clause transformation, or in short, we can say TRL. The next one is inflectional transformation or T in VL, okay, that is inflectional transformation transformation that uh, occurs or that involves inflectional processes. The next one is negative sentence transformation. And the last one will be interpretive sentence transformation. So these are kinds of transformation that occur in English structure. Um, however, in this meeting, or in this occasion, I'm only going to show you three kinds of transformation. They are particle transformation, 
adverbial phrases transformation and relative clause transformation. The other three kinds of transformation will be discussed later in the next occasion. Well, for the first time we see or we explore a particle transformation or TPRT. Okay, now what is particle transformation? Of course, you know, it can be answered very easily that particle transformation is a transformation that involves particles. That is particle transformation. Now, study the following sentences, and I would like you to evaluate which of them are written in an underlying form, or which of them are written in a deep structure. Okay? Now, let's see the first group of a sentence, okay? Uh, we have two sentences, John put on his shoes and John put his shoes on. Okay, which structure is, or which structure demonstrate the underlying form? Okay, you see here that in the first sentence or in sentence 1A, we have here that put on is not separated, okay? The phrasal verb put on is not separated, but in sentence 1B, put is separated from its particle on. So we have here John put his shoes on. So which structure do you think is or demonstrates the underlying form? Okay, very good. Of course, you know, the sentence that demonstrates the use of deep structure is the sentence in 1A, John put on his shoes because, you know, we have put on, okay, instead of put, blah, 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 on. So that is the underlying structure. And the second group of sentences, we have here, I switch off the light and I switch the light off. Of course, you know, by following the way I explained, okay, the first group of sentences, I do believe that you agree that the sentence in 2A is a sentence that uses or that is written, that are written in an underlying form. And the third group of sentences, the manager call off the meeting, the manager called the meeting off. So the particle in A is not separated, but the particle in 3B is separated. And this is what we call as particle. Particle is a word that usually accompanies another word. In this case, is a verb. Okay, now, um, sentences in A's, okay, in, in the first sent, in the first group, and in the second group, in the third group, okay, they used deep structure, or they are written in an underlying form. John put on his shoes, I switch off the line, and the manage call of the meeting. These sentences demonstrate deep structure. And the sentences in B's, they belong to, they belong to, okay, very good, surface structure. They demonstrate the use of surface structure. John put his shoes on. It means that if the sentence demonstrate the use of surface structure, that sentence must have experienced what we call transformation. So what make the structure different, what makes the structure different from its underlying form is called transformation. And we are going to use a tree diagram to show such a transformation. Okay, now I'm going to demonstrate, okay? I'm going to demonstrate uh, the use of a tree diagram, okay, in transformational rules for 
the first group of sentences. Okay, now look at here, study this three diagram. You see this structure demonstrate the use of deep structure because this is the way we have in our mind when we want to say John put on his shoes. Okay, so you see here, uh, as we have learned before, that sentence is composed of NP and VP. Okay, and here, the difference is located in the way we divide or in the way we analyze the verb phrase. Usually, for the verb phrase, we only have here verb, and then we only have one branch for the verb that is for the constituent of that verb. However, in this structure, we have that we have a verb that is branch or that is broken down into smaller elements, okay? The verb here is branch into verb and particle. Why? Because we use phrasal verb. We use a phrasal verb as the constituent of the verb. So we have here two branches for the verb. Verb itself and the next one is particle. And the rest, okay, is similar with the way we analyze previous sentences. Okay, now we are going to transform, we are going to change this uh, structure, this deep structure into the surface structure. So we have this diagram for the surface structure. So you can see here that the verb phrase is branched into verb, but the verb here has only one branch that is its constituent put, okay? Um, so where's the particle? the particle has been moved, okay? The particle has been moved and is placed after the, the NP, okay? In the deep structure, the particle is placed before the NP, but in the surface structure, the result of the transformation, okay, the particle is placed after the NP. So you can see that we have change the structure, then we have changed the structure. And this is what we call as transformation, okay? That is particle transformation. What we transform is the element of particles. Well, everybody, let's go on with the second type of transformation that is adverbial phrases transformation. Okay, adverbial phrases transformation. Okay, adverbial phrase, of course, you know, is a phrase whose core is an adverb. Okay, now study the following sentences. And once again, I would like you to determine which of them are written in an underlying form. Okay, these are sentences. Okay, we have three sentences for group one. We have here A, he read the book loudly, B, loudly he read the book, and C, he loudly read the book. Okay. In a deep structure or in an underlying form, adverb is located after, after the verb. Okay, it is located after the verb. Why? Because adverb is a word, is a class of word which is used to modify a verb. And it is placed after the verb. However, the sentences this in B and C show that the, the adverb is located before the verb. Okay? Sentence in 1B shows that loudly is even placed in the beginning of a sentence, okay? So loudly he read the book. 
okay? It is not placed only before the verb, but it can also be placed in the beginning of a sentence. In one C, we have here that uh, loudly, the adverb loudly is placed before the verb. Okay, so the structure is adverb plus verb. And you see that sentences in 1B and 1C have uh, or are the results of transformation. Now, for point two, we have here a more complicated adverb phrase. Okay, because the adverb phrase here is composed of an adverb clause. Okay, for the purpose of sentence analysis by using a tree diagram, we consider a clause as, as, a, as a phrase. Why is it so? Because the function of the clause in this context is similar with the function of a phrase. So you can see that as he studied Leslie, yeah, as he studied Leslie here, is used to modify, okay, is used to modify why he got a bad mark. So um, this is considered as a phrase in the way we analyze a sentence by using a tree diagram. So in 2A, the sentence is written in an underlying form. That is what we have in our mind when we want to say we got a bad mark has studied Leslie. However, sometimes, you know, we want to emphasize that the most important part of the sentence is as he studied Leslie. So we can move that clause into the beginning of the sentence. So we have, as he studied Leslie, he got a bad mark. And as usual, you see that when, uh, as he stated Leslie is moved into the beginning of a sentence, there must be a comma. Why? Because as he studied Leslie is also called a dependent clause. When a dependent clause precedes the dependent clause, there must be a comma to separate them, okay? Now, we are going to analyze all of the sentences in one and two. Okay, the first one, we analyze the sentence in one A and B. Here you are, this is the analysis. So this is the deep structure. This is the way we usually use a sentence. We have an adverb after, after the uh, verb phrase. So we have here, he read the book loudly. So the verb phrase is divided into verb and then NP and then adverb phrase. This is the common or the usual form of a sentence that uses adverb phrase. Okay, now we're going to transform, okay, this deep structure into a surface structure. First of all, we move the adverb into the beginning of a sentence. So we have here a different, okay, a different structure or a different PS rule for the sentence. Why? Usually we have a sentence which is divided into NP and VP, but because of the transformation, the sentence is branched into three. Okay, what are they? The first one is adverb phrase, the second one is noun phrase, and the last one is verb phrase. Okay, so the adverb of phrase, which is located after the noun phrase, okay, now is moved, okay, into the beginning, begin, beginning of the sentence. Okay, this transformation, okay, is only located or is only experienced by the adverb. In other words, 
the other elements of a sentence in the way we analyze by using a three diagram uh, do not have any changes, okay? They are just similar with what we have in a deep structure, okay? The difference is only when we move the end of phrase into the beginning of a sentence, which results in a new or in a unique structure or in a unit PS rule of a sentence. So we have three bridges for, for a sentence, adverb phrase, noun phrase, and verb phrase. Okay. Now, we see that adverb of phrase can also be moved, okay, can also be moved after the subject or before the verb. So the result is like this, okay? So um, we have here, okay, now uh, the, the word loudly, okay, the word loudly is just moved before the word read, okay? So I believe that you can do it by yourself, okay? Just move loudly before the verb friend. Okay, now let's go on with the adverbial phrases that involve clauses as the element of the adverb phrase. Okay, so here you are. He got a bad mark as he studied Leslie. In adverbial phrases transformation, we have, you know, uh, a bit different structure or a bit different uh, tree type. As you can see here, that we have a sentence. Okay, we have a sentence as the branch. Usually the sentence is located here because you know it is the largest, okay? It is the largest form or the largest structure. However, here we have another sentence as the element of the adverb phrase. This is what I told you before that adverb phrase here actually is the adverb clause, but as it functions or it serves as uh, the the ad, the phrase. So the adverb clause here is written in adverb phrase. So whenever we have an a clause, there must be a conjunction. Okay, there must be a conjunction. So you can see here that the adverb of phrase is branched into CJS. Do you still remember CJS? As here stands for subordinate. So CJS here means subordinate conjunction. Yeah, subordinate conjunction. Okay, so we have S as the subordinate conjunction. Okay, so the structure of adverb phrase for adverb clause here is subordinate conjunction plus sentence. Okay, so the structure of, of adverb phrase in this context is subordinate conjunction plus sentence. Okay, this, um, yeah, this structure, okay, the only, um, you know, element of analysis that may make you difficult in analyzing the sentence by using a tree diagram. Okay, so uh, when you are able or when you succeed to divide adverb of phrase into subordinate conjunction and sentence, the other analysis becomes easier. Why? Because okay, this is very common for you that sentence is divided into NP and FIP. Okay, NP and FIP. So it is easy. But so what makes transformational rules for uh, transformational rules in a uh, three diagram difficult is when we have to branch the adverb of phrase or when we analyze the elements of adverb phrase. So remember that adverb phrase is composed of subordinate conjunction and sentence. Once you are able to identify the structure of the 
ever face, okay, the analysis becomes much easier because the way you analyze is just similar with the way you analyze previous sentences. Okay, now in the first formation, we are going to move, okay? We are going to move the adverb of phrase into the beginning of a sentence. So here you are. This is the way how we transform the structure into a service structure. So we have the same rule or the, the same PS rules for the sentence. We have three branches for the sentence. We have adverb phrase, noun phrase, and verb phrase. But this is different from the previous sentence where the adverb is composed of only an adverb. But in this context, only in this sentence, adverb phrase is composed of subordinate conjunction percents. So when we compare the surface structure with the deep structure, okay, we only move the adverb of phrase, uh, the adverb phrase into, okay, the first element of a sentence. Just move the adverb phrase into the beginning of a sentence, okay, because the analysis is just similar, okay, it's just similar with the one we have in a deep structure, only the position of the adverb phrase has been moved into the beginning of a sentence. So what do you think? Is it still difficult? It's not as difficult as you think because we only move the adverb phrase okay, into the beginning of a sentence. But what makes such analysis difficult is okay, the structure of the adverb phrase. Okay? Adverb phrase is composed of subordinate conjunction plus sentence. Once you succeed to identify the elements of the adverb phrase, the analysis becomes very easy. Okay, everybody. Now let's go on with the last type of transformation, uh, transformation in, in, in this occasion that is relative clause transformation. As I told you earlier, that the other three kinds of transformation will be discussed in the next occasion. Okay, now we, we have here the last topic of transformation that is relative clause transformation. Relative clause is also called adjective clause. Why is it called relative clause? Because in an adjective clause, we use a relative pronoun. So we can also say relative clause instead of adjective clause. Why is it called adjective clause? Because the function of the clause is as adjective. Now, study the following sentences. Okay, uh, we have here two sentences. The man is very kind and the man likes me. You can see in these two sentences, they have the similar elements. Okay, they have the similar elements. Okay, the first sentence has the men, okay? And the word or the phrase the men is also found in the second sentence, okay? If you want to combine these two sentences into one sentence, you can use a relative pronoun, okay? You can use a relative pronoun, okay? Um, now, basically in our mind, okay, when we want to combine these two sentences, we have this structure. The man, the man likes me is very kind. Okay, the man, the man likes me is very kind. However, when you have such kind of a sentence, you find there a repetition, the repetition of the NP, the man. And you know, repetition is very close to redundancy. Okay, it's very close to redundancy. And you know, it is not an effective sentence. Therefore, 
Okay, we use a relative pronoun. Okay, you know, there are several kinds of relative pronouns in English, including who, whom, whose, which, that, where, and when. These are relative pronouns in English. And the right relative pronoun to be used in this context is who. Why? Because the position of the man in the first sentence is as the subject. Okay? So the man here occupies the subject position. So the best or the right uh, relative pronoun to be used in this context is who. So we have this sentence. The man who likes me is very kind. Okay, now let's see the second, uh, uh, the second group of sentences. We have, I met the girl and you helped the girl yesterday. Again, we have here the similar elements in the first sentence and in the second sentence. And this uh, has fulfilled the conditions to join or to combine these two sentences into a single sentence by using a relative pronoun. However, basically in our mind, we have such kind of structure. Okay, we have, uh, I met the girl, you helped the girl yesterday. Okay. However, the word, uh, sorry, the phrase the girl is repeated and this shows in effective sentence. In order to make this sentence effective, we need a relative pronoun. In order to determine which relative pronoun is the right relative pronoun to be used in this context, we have to see or we have to analyze the position of the phrase in the first sentence. And so you can see that the girl in the first sentence is the object. So the right relative pronoun to be used is whom. Now we combine these two sentences by using a uh, by using a relative pronoun and the result is like in B. I met the girl whom you helped yesterday. Okay, now let's analyze these sentences by using a tree diagram. Okay, so this is um, the deep structure. This is the basic structure in our mind when we want to combine the man is very kind, the man likes me. So we have the man, the man likes me, it's very kind. That's the result. Okay, in our mind, we will combine it. However, Considering the repetition of the phrase, the man, okay, now we transform this sentence, okay, or this structure into a more effective structure in a surface structure. So we change the man with which, okay? So you have here RP as the relative pronoun, okay? Relative phrase, sorry, relative phrase. Relative phrase here is composed of sentence. Yeah, it's composed of a sentence. And the sentence is composed of NP and PP. This is usual. Once again, the key point to succeed in analyzing a relative cross transformation is located here. Okay, it's located whether you are able to identify the structure of the relative phrase. And remember, relative phrase here is the element of the NP. So we begin from here. We have NP that is composed of determiner and then noun and then here relative phrase, okay? And then relative phrase is composed of only a sentence. You cannot find here any conjunction. Why you cannot find any conjunction? Because, you know, relative phrase exclusively uses a relative pronoun as the conjunction. So it doesn't use subordinate or 
uh, 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 coordinate conjunction. It only uses a relative pronoun as the conjunction. Okay, so we have here sentence and PVP, and the rest will be similar. Okay, so uh, the way we analyze NP and VP is just similar with the way we analyze such structure in the previous sentences. Okay, now the result is different in terms of the element of the NP. If the NP in the first sentence or in a deep structure is composed of determinant noun, the man, but in the surface structure, the noun phrase is composed of the relative pronoun who, okay? So relative pronoun is symbolized by pro R, relative pronoun. And the other elements are, the analysis of the other elements is just similar, okay? With the analysis in, in the deep structure. The difference is only located in the element of the NP. In the deep structure, the NP is composed of determinant plus noun, but in the uh, deep structure, we have here NP that is composed of only a relative pronoun. Okay, that is for relative pronoun who. However, for relative pronoun whom, our work, okay, our task is a bit more complicated. You see, here, I met the girl, you helped the girl yesterday, okay? I met the girl, you helped the girl yesterday. So we have here noun phrase, which is composed of determiner plus noun plus relative phrase. And this is similar, we have a sentence and the sentence is composed of NP, okay? Which is, uh, composed of or which is represented by personal pronoun you, and we have here VP. I think this is uh, very common for you. So we don't need to talk much about it because the analysis is just similar with the uh, thousands of analysis that you have done on previous sentences. Now, relative transformation here. Okay, the result is like this. Uh, 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 three type. So everybody, um, you can see here that we have moved the position of the girl, which used to be located, which used to be placed after the verb, but here in the surface structure, the position of the girl has been moved. Okay, has been moved and. It is now placed before the NP or before the subject. Okay, so relative pronoun here is composed of a sentence, and the sentence is composed of NP, NP, VP. Now, once again, we have discovered the new PS rule of a sentence. Okay, so the sentence can also be composed of by two NPs, NP, NP, VP. Okay, previously in the adverb phrase, we also have a new um, PS rule for sentence that is adverb phrase NP, VP. And here we have NP, NP, VP. So you can find here transformation that involves Boom. Okay. Uh, so we have here NP. The first NP is composed of relative pronoun whom. And the second NP is composed of personal pronoun you. Okay. So this is the transformation. So um, relative pronoun whom used to be located after the verb when we follow the structure in the surface structure because the girl is located after the verb. I meant the girl you held whom yesterday, but, but it is not common in English. Okay, in English structure, 
the relative pronoun whom, okay, precedes, okay, precedes the subject and predicate. The subject, it means that it precedes the NP and VP. So we have here the structure of the sentence NP plus NP plus VP. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you have seen now how I demonstrated uh, the use of two diagram in analyzing sentences that experience transformation. And once again, I believe that the hardest way, okay, or the hardest point in analyzing sentences by using a tree diagram is the PS rules, okay? Whenever you are able to identify the PS rules, okay, uh, for the sentence that you analyze, you can analyze any kinds of sentences, okay? None of sentences is difficult to be analyzed by using a tree diagram if you succeed to identify the PS rules. That's all, ladies and gentlemen, and see you in another occasion.